Well, I must say, this project's coming along better than I thought. Good morning, everybody. It's Stephen here for Bland Designs and the Idiot Quilter, and welcome to my weekly vlog for Monday, October the 3rd. Uh, 2022 vlog number 283 and what have I been working on well I just came off of a zoom weekend virtual retreat and I was making lots of things and more about that retreat in a few minutes but let's turn to what I have been creating and here it is this one is the one block wonder made with panels um, it's a one-off and what I mean by that is yes it was an interesting thing to do but I did find it a little tedious, too many little pieces to sew together, and there's some tricks to sewing it as well. Now, if you're interested in how complex this is, or maybe how simple it is, because it looks more complex than it is to make, but there's other dimensions of this that I would like to tell you about, then tune in tomorrow to the Idiot Quilter, and I will be discussing this in a little bit more detail. But the top is all done it's pretty and um yeah i've got to throw it on lucy and get it to uh, quilt it the next project let me find my picture here is right here now this is boring <laughs> i will tell you that right off the bat this is flannel um this was a kit that i bought when we did our big london hall trip uh back there a month or so ago and um yeah, that's tulip pink fabric, by the way. I'm not a fan of tulip pink. Well, let me put it this way. I don't hate tulip pink, but it's not one I reach for. Um, but I saw this kit I thought it would make a quick and easy Christmas quilt. But it's boring. So I'm going to add some embroidered uh, applique pieces to this in the center just to break up the monotony of these rectangles. And you can see I've got one up there already. That's not sewn down. That's just pinned on. I'm going to make a couple of others. And my idea in my head right now is just to go across with maybe three of these little gnome, Christmas gnome kind of things, because you know how I like gnomes. Um, across the middle of the quilt just to liven it up again more details about what i have planned for this tomorrow on the idiot quilter and i've been busy making my christmas socks and i've uh, got about eight made now i think there's not eight there but these ones are complete because i've added this little freestanding lace snowflake that i did in variegated thread on my embroidery machine and um you know, I'm not good at hand sewing, so those are glued down with fabric glue. And I think they'll hold okay. Um, yeah, I know. Never mind. Again, more details tomorrow on Idiot Quilter. Oops, don't want those yet. Okay, so that takes me to the YouTube channel of the week. Now, you get to a certain age <laughs> in your life, and I think I'm at that certain age, where you start to reminisce. That's the polite word for it. The other word for it is bore people to tears about when I was a young man. This is what I remember. This is what things cost. This is what things were like. This was how people behaved. Blah, 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 blah. But, you know, we all go down uh, memory lane, don't we, about things that came from our childhood that we have maybe fond memories for. Well, there is a YouTube channel for that. It's called Recollection Road. This week's YouTube of the week is called Recollection Road. And if you're into nostalgia, you're going to love this. This uh, YouTube channel I stumbled upon by accident, and I'm really loving it. Uh, it's great entertainment. Uh, it brings up a lot of nice memories from the past. Um, it's just something that warms your heart because it gives you that sense of nostalgia. So you can see here in their list of videos, they have things like defunct department stores, uh, more forgotten grocery stores, brands born in the 1980s. Uh, this would horrify parents today, the dangers and funds of growing up. Uh, county fairs of yesteryear, um, things about cars, things about toys, things about restaurants. There is just a whole variety of topics, as you can see from this list as I scroll it by. Um, I really like it. 
uh, it's very well done. Um, and they're very short little episodes. So, you know, it's a, a little mind clear for you as well. So if you want to run down uh, memory lane, then check out Recollection Road. And you will find a link for Recollection Road in the show notes below. You'll also find a link for Stephen and Walter Live. Yesterday was a mishmash of everything. And that's what they're, they're becoming. I'll be honest, when we do Stephen and Walter Live, I'm often scrambling for a organizing topic. And so oftentimes you will see, and it's not purposely clickbait, uh, but I will put something in it that suggests we're going to talk about one thing and we end up talking about other things. Happens all the time. Uh, and we may only just, well, I try to touch on whatever I put in the title. Writing titles that are catchy is not easy either. Okay. Um, maybe my imagination's getting stunted. I don't know. Hope not. I need it. But uh, anyways, we talked about this, that, and the other thing. We talked about sewing machines. We talked about uh, stupid people. <laughs> we did. Sorry if stupid offends you. But I believe the only people that are offended by the word stupid are stupid people. So whatever. But um, yeah, so check that out if you want to hear us ramble. And you're going to say, is that unusual? Yeah, I heard the sarcasm in your voice. Um, I also have links for uh, Idiot Quilter Presents. Uh, I did a little, well, not really a tutorial, but I discussed my collection of rulers call it Confessions of a Ruler Slut, speaking of creative titles. And there is a link to the interview I did with Kendon, Kendall Taylor of Quilting Basics. He's an Aussie, very, very interesting and talented uh, sewer, sewist. And there is a link to the Idiot Quilter episode uh, where, again, I shared a lot of things about a lot of things. Um, there's also some special links. Uh, at the very beginning of the resource uh, list, there is Sew and Craft With Me, my uh, attempt at, you know, when you get lonely, see if I'm online and we'll share company and uh, sew or craft or whatever together. I'm going to say more about that too later on. Now there is Craft and Chat. Craft and Chat is coming up this Wednesday, first Wednesday of every month, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and runs till approximately 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that's when we just get together and sew or quilt or crochet or knit or organize your underwear drawer, whatever floats your boat. Um, so uh, we have I have my regulars who usually come, but we're always open for new people to join us as well. And you will find the link in the show notes. And there is a link to the uh, retreat uh, coming up very soon, only a couple of weeks away, um, October the 22nd. And the details about that are on that link. And there's also a link to the video that I made as well about that. And a little bit more, a, a bit of an update on the retreat uh, coming up later in today's show. So that takes me to looking out my window. And just let's see if I can find my window. There it is. Now, it's dark. <laughs> yes, it is dark. So here we go. Um, yeah, sun's just coming up. I took this at 644. The days are getting shorter. We don't go into the shift in... Um, now, I never know. Is that daylight saving time we're going to move into? I think that's what it's called. Or is it standard? I am not sure i always get those two terms mixed up but we're going into that but not until november so yeah these pictures are going i'm going to have to get up either later to get some light or it's all going to be in the dark but there you go uh blue sky in the distance um temperature right now is three degrees celsius uh walter harvested what was left of our peppers and things uh yesterday from the garden and we'll talk more about that too later on as well do you get the feeling i'm trying to get you to stay here longer because i keep talking about things i'm going to talk about later um i'm not doing that on purpose he says yeah whatever but anyways so i'm not sure what the forecast is for today but that sky is promising even if it is a little dark out there um 
Okay, so let's go back to me. And uh, yeah, let, let's just take a little aside here for a minute. And you know how I switch back and forth? You know, I can switch you here, switch me there, switch you there. I could even switch you to other parts of my um, room. Uh, what does this other button do? <laughs> I can't find it. Um, yeah, this. Let's come back to me. Yeah, all because I have this little box called a Stream Deck from Elgato. And I have had that now for about a year or so. And it's great. I love it when it works. So recently, OBS, which is the software I'm using right now to record this. Um, it's an open source so software. Everybody uses it. It is absolutely free. And because it's open source, there are several people working on it all the time to make it better. So they put out version 28. Yay. Got a notice that there was a new version sometime last week. Downloaded it, installed it to my computer and uh, thought I was happy as you know what in you know what. Well, then I went to use my stream deck. No, the two did not want to talk to each other. Long story short, they also did an update to stream deck. And the two are not compatible with each other. Okay, not the programs. I screwed around with it for hours trying to get this to work. I saw stuff on the internet telling me how to fix this bug and whatnot. And I tried all those things and it doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work the way it's supposed to work. I figured out a workaround to get everything to work, but it's an annoying thing. It means that I have to run a couple of little short little programs before I can get everything up and working. Now, the Elgato, the Stream Deck, works with other things that I use it for, but it's just with OBS. So I guess I'm just going to have to get used to doing the little workaround that I've created until they come out with other versions that fix the bug. They're aware of the bug. Uh, in fact, if you use OBS, and uh, if you're thinking about updating it to version 28, check the release notes on it because there's a whole lot of things it doesn't do right now. It's not really ready for the general market, I don't think. And there are some YouTubes about this as well. So, yep, I'm glad that there are people out there constantly developing it because it's a really good program. And as I said, it is free. So there you go. But maybe... They need to hold back a little bit. And uh, Elgato, as a company, do not seem to give a, you know, rat's nest about this uh, at all. Um, because their little workaround doesn't work around it. I had to work, make my own workaround. And I don't know why. Now, I will be fair here. Uh, it's not completely these developers' uh, fault. I... I'm still working with my Mac, and there probably is a simple solution to this. And I think I know what a possibility is, and I have to look into that maybe sometime this week and see. But in the meantime, I do have a workaround so I can use it. It's annoying that I have to use that workaround, but nevertheless, it's there. But that's, yeah, that's how technology works or doesn't, whichever. Anyways, how did I get on that? I don't know, because what I want to talk about is what's really pissing me off this week. And, you know, do we need city councils or city councillors? You know, I've been doing a little bit of an experiment or research project where I sent out an email to each of the candidates running for municipal office um, in the upcoming election we're having here in my area. And... Uh, only two of the candidates did not answer me. Those two candidates, I have done a little bit re more research, and basically they don't have a website. They don't have any posters, nothing out. So why are they even trying to run for a city council? I, I, it's bad enough that um, most people haven't got a clue who's running in their own writing. Uh, I was one of those people too. Um, but I decided to do something about it. I decided to educate myself. I, I do want to exercise my right to vote. You have to, because my feeling is at any level of government, if you decide you don't want to vote for whatever reason, then shut up. <laughs> Just shut up. Don't complain about what's happening uh, to you 
through you know municipal politics, provincial or federal, whatever, if you don't vote in those elections, as far as I'm concerned, you have absolutely no right to gripe. <laughs> hey, that should be a slogan on a sign. No right to gripe. Vote. <laughs> but um, yeah, so two didn't answer me. Uh, the rest did. I shared the responses. I'm not going to share them here because obviously they would mean nothing to you. You don't know these people. You're not, most of you are not living in my riding. So it means nothing to you. Um, I did share them though on my Facebook page so other people could read. I didn't doctor them. I didn't uh, edit them at all. I put them as they were. Um, and here's my conclusion. I know who I'm going to vote for. I think there's a long shot that this individual is going to get in because he's running against somebody who's the same old, same old. And the same old, same old is not very good. She's completely ineffectual. Uh, even her reply to me sucked. Um, yeah, she's just there to warm a seat, you know, for whatever reason. I think, too, she's a real estate agent. So, you know, she's promoting her own business by doing this as well. Um, the person I'm going to vote for, though, he's young. That's not in his favor. Uh, you know how it works in politics. People don't trust young people running for this kind of stuff. And yeah, but he's a go-getter. He's intelligent. Um, he's, there's no flies on this guy. Um, and he's not that young. I mean, late 20s, okay? He does look younger, though. That'll be good for him when he's my age. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So what's pissing me off though is really, this really opened my eyes. Well, I already suspected this, but this really reiterated for me. Most city councillors in my area have absolutely no interest in the people. All they have is an interest in a paycheck and to, you know, in their little world, it's impressive to be on city council. City council doesn't seem to have much power over things that they should have power over, like the police services. They have very little say in that. I mean, the police services right now are basically a quasi-military group. And, you know, across the world, we've heard horror stories about the police. Don't get me on that, because that's not what this rant's about. But, basically, they have no control there. Um... They have very little power. Um, and what power they do have, they're really not using it effectively. I don't know why they're in politics. Well, I do know why. It's why anybody goes into politics, really. And yeah, they can give us the blah, blah, blah explanation. They're there for the people. They want to they wanna do something good in that. But the bottom line is, nine out of ten of them are just there for a paycheck, power and or sense of power and a nice pension now i don't think city councillors get a pension but they do at the provincial and the federal level in our country and it's nice and it's for life and they only have to stay in for two terms basically to get it so you know why do we have city councils they're a waste of money and they do waste our money <laughs> in many ways um, I don't know what the alternative is. I mean, if we leave it to the next level of government, well, pff, they're not going to be any more effective because way too many municipalities, right? Um, our premier just gave, and I don't understand this, he's given more power to mayors. And I'm still not clear on uh, what that's going to do, um, how that is a good thing. I don't think it necessarily is. I don't know enough about that. I need to do more research. But anyways, the world of politics, you know. Quite frankly, another lo uh, slogan for uh, politics should be, um, screw you, <laughs> because they do. Vote for me. I'll screw you. Yeah. So my eyes, although they weren't really totally shut to all of this, I just got another insight or a little bit more insight into the whole process and what we're really voting for. We're voting for the one person we think who can do the least amount of damage is the lesser of all the other dickheads that are running. It's really what it comes down to and that's just sad.
Okay, so product reviews. Oh, you're going to be so excited by this one. I can hardly wait to show you. Yes, I'm saying that facetiously. Crockpot. Yep, bought a new crockpot. Now, <laughs> I have several crockpots in various sizes, but my biggest one died, oh, six months ago or so, and we finally got around to replacing it. Well, for us, we don't use a crock pot every day, so it wasn't really imperative. But the fall weather is here, and that's when you start to think of comfort foods, right? Like a big pot of chili or, you know, stew or something like that. And, you know, I like to make enough that I can take it and freeze it in smaller containers, and we have it throughout the winter kind of a thing. It's that time of the year where we're all going into hibernation mode and squirreling things away, right? It's just the kind of animals we are. So we got this new crock pot. It wasn't a bad price. I think it was about 50 bucks on Amazon, but it came with the Little Dipper. You can see it right down in here. It's called the 16 ounce Little Dipper. So do I need another crock? So I got two crock pots. I don't know what I'm going to do with the Little Dipper. Make fondue? I don't know. <laughs> Never have that. But um, it says here it's an eight quart oval. And yes, it does not have the fancy electronic panel on it, which those ones are a little bit more expensive, but that's what our old one was. And that's what went on it. And, you know, do you really need it? Because essentially a crock pot, slow cooker, you know, this one has, I think, uh, a low, a high and a warm and off on it, on that dial. And that's all you need in a crock pot. I mean, the whole idea is you put something in it in the morning, go off and do your things, and by supper time you've got stew or something in the crock pot. So, um, actually, their stew looks really good in the picture. Yeah, well, we know that's fake. Um, but anyways, yeah, so that was an exciting new purchase, a crock pot. And as I tell you about it, it's still sitting in the box. I haven't even taken it out yet. And because I'm thinking, what can I make to test it out? Like, I think I still have frozen chili from mm, the last time I made chili. Does chili go bad in the freezer? I don't know. <laughs> have to check that out because it could be vintage. Very vintage. Okay. So um, that takes me to the 3D corner. I have absolutely nothing to show you. My printers have been quiet for almost two weeks. Hard to believe. I have run out of things. I think I told you this last week. I have run out of things to make. Um, and it's kind of sad because I've got three of them sitting over there. So I'm trying to think of some things, some things I can make that would be practical, that I can give away, that, you know, I'm, I'm done with making all the little ornamental kind of things. I have shelves. You can see them behind me. That's just one out of many shelves in this room that are full of, like, gnomes or pin cushions or action figures or mickey mouse or whatever i mean yeah come on so i'm gonna have to take i'm gonna have to take part of one day and really sit down and do a search on the internet and really see what else is out there maybe i need to start making bigger pieces i've stayed away from things that uh you know are in multiple pieces you have to put together uh, later, um, because, you know, I'm not a model builder, but, uh, we'll see, we'll see, but they can't sit there and just rot. I need to find something else. So yeah, you got any ideas? Let me know. All right. That takes me to blast from the past trips. This is part three of the pinnacles, uh, in Australia. And this was all these big sand dunes in the whole bit. Well, this one shows the sand dunes and what we did. We were in an all-terrain vehicle, kind of a small, the short bus, so to speak. And we drove over the sand dunes. And I do remember that they had to let some of the air out of the tires for this uh, to get good traction on the sand because it's a lot of sand. Um, it looks like a desert. Well, I guess it is a, t a form of desert. And we went up and down these dunes and you will hear the screams of fear and delight as we plummeted over the edges of these things. It was a little on the scary side, but I caught that on video. And then we went, well, 
sort of what they call it snowboard not snowboarding sandboarding which is sort of like sand snowboarding except you're on sand and that was kind of fun so that's what this video has in it for you this week if you come here you can see the sand picking up off the top of that and it's moving the sand from west to east and high winds so today it's going to be really nice on the sand because it's not as windy we'll come back here and do sandboarding later where those people with those boards are all right Okay, I just got to put it into four wheel drive. We're not in four wheel drive yet. Didn't quite make that one. We won't go any further on there. Good sharks, obviously. Okay, we're going to go up here and then go over. Over the side, over the side. Sorry to disturb your peace and quiet. Moment in time. Holy crap. Oh, don't step back for sure. He won't stop. Whoa. 
Oh god, dude. Is he gonna get back? Yeah. I'm not so sure about that line, that's a little steep. Did you see it? I did see it, but just went down. There's Walter's daring snowboard trick, or sandboard trick, I should say. <laughs> and that takes me to events in the past week well the big event this week was energize 6.0 what is that you may ask well you know i belong to an online quilters group called the quilters way it is run and operated by kim jameson hurst she is a friend I call her a friend because she is a friend. And uh, I have been with this group since its inception several years ago now. Time has gone by fast. And uh, she always has, usually twice a year, uh, an online Zoom event. It, uh, it's a retreat. And so we had that this weekend. And it was pretty good. Um, for me personally, there was a little bit of an issue, but I'm over that now, but it was good. Um, so yeah, I got a lot done. That's what on that event, I finished the uh, one block wonder. Um, I pretty much have got almost finished, at least in terms of tops, the flannel quilt that I showed you as well. And it's also over my shoulder. What's that? My left. Yeah. The other left. Um, and some other things done. So yeah, it was very, very productive weekend um, with that. And, you know, Kim did a lot of work to put that together. And it was very much appreciated by those of us that attended it uh, as well. And if you don't know about the Quilters Way and you're interested in joining an online group, there is a monthly fee. It's very reasonable. I think it's $11.99 American. It is a Canadian group, but for some reason... The subscription price is in American dollars. You can quit at any time. I think there's even a one-week free trial or something like that to try it out. Um, so just do a search in Google, The Quilter's Way, and you'll find it. And you can check it out from there if you're interested. Little plug for Kim. Okay, so what's coming up? Well, I've got lots of things coming up. I've already mentioned Craft and Chat. That's this Wednesday, October the... Today's it. 3rd, 5th, October 5th, 2022, in case somebody's watching this in the future, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All are welcome. And the link is in the show notes, as I already said. There is uh, also the links I was talking about for the retreat, but uh, just an update about the retreat. Uh, the response for registering has been tremendous. I think I'm up to 72 registered individuals. I can handle slightly over 90. Um, so if you're thinking about it, but you've been sitting on the fence, you better make up your mind quick <laughs> because every day more people have signed up for it. And when I get to that limit, which is, you know, I think I've got about 18 spots left, 20 spots maybe, I can squeeze it out of this. Um, I will start a waiting list. Um, but that's coming up soon, October the 22nd. There'll be more up updates about that soon. And those that have already registered, you will get uh, an agenda for the day and some other updates and things like that as well. So bottom line is you snooze, you lose. It's free, absolutely free. Three fascinating guest speakers lots of time to work on your projects there will be prizes there will not be games 
because I don't know about you, but at events like this, I really don't want to play a silly game. No, not going to do it. Having said that, there is also a icebreaker cocktail party the evening before on the 21st. And uh, if you've registered, then you'll have the link for that as well. There may be a game for that. But we'll all be drinking anyway, so who cares? <laughs> Whatever. Yes, it is that kind of party. Okay. Um. So yeah, that's coming up. Check out my video about it. Check out the link in the show notes as well. It gives you a PDF document that explains it all to you in detail. Okay, what else do we have coming up? Well, next Saturday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I am going to be appearing on the Guy Who Sews uh, live broadcast. We'll be both working on some projects and chatting. And people can come on there in, in the chat mode, ask questions, uh, talk to us, discuss things. Should be a lot of fun. Um, Sean is somebody who I interviewed some time ago. Great interview. If you've never seen it, go check it out in my back catalog. And uh, yeah, I, I, I feel that Sean is basically a friend. You know, the internet is wonderful for making friendships. I guess it's sort of like the old pen pal days, except it's more instantaneous and you can connect by video uh, with it. But, you know, there's a lot of people I call friends on here now, and I've never met them face to face. Um, but that's that's the wonder of today's 21st century technology, isn't it? So, yeah, I'll be on there um, working on something and talking with Sean um, and with anybody else who uh, joins us in the chat part. So check that out on the Guy Who Sews uh, YouTube channel. You just put in the Guy Who Sews and you'll find it uh, in the search engine for YouTube. Okay, uh, so next weekend here in Canada, it's Thanksgiving. Yes, I know Americans seem to get really confused about that because they think we celebrate Thanksgiving the same time of the year as they do. And of course, for Americans, it's the end of November when they have Thanksgiving. For us, it's usually early October and it's this weekend coming. And so my sister sent me an email the other day and she invited Walter and myself to her place uh, to have, you know, family dinner, Thanksgiving dinner with her, her my brother-in-law and, and the, my nephew and my niece. I always refer to them as the kids. They're not kids. <laughs> But I guess that's the way life is, isn't it? Um, to me, they're still kids. They're young, you know, late 20s. But anyways, that'll be nice. That'll be fun. And uh, yeah, I have to admit, I feel a little guilty about not having everybody over here for Thanksgiving. But I'll be honest about it. It's a lot of work. And I'm sore <laughs> the next day after I've done that um, as well. And yeah, I'm starting to understand what my mother felt when she got older, you know, having everybody over for dinner and everything. It was it was a lot for her. Um, Yeah, so I get that, too. But I really appreciate it because I want to see my sister. You know, she's all I have left, her and her family, basically here in Ontario. I mean, there's my brother, but he's out in B.C. I haven't seen him in ages. And we don't talk that regularly either. Um, one day, and I, I think it should be soon uh, with that, you know, I'm not getting any younger. Uh, we need to make a trip out to BC and we need to make a point of visiting my brother. Yeah. I said this to Walter. Now I digress. I said this to Walter the other day. There are things that I need to, to talk to my brother about. Um. Anyways, there's always a little drama in families, isn't there? Okay, so that's going to be fun. And I guess I got to start getting out my Halloween slash fall decorations. So I might do that later this week as well. Uh, dig out all my little bits and pieces that I put out. Um, now I've got banners that I've made for my front doors for Halloween, but um, I don't know if they're going to get hung up on the doors. Because we got contacted, well, Walter contacted the door people. You know we're getting new doors and windows in the front of our house. And Walter kind of contacted and said, Sue, when can we expect these? Because it was mm, early June when we did the 
ordering and everything. And we knew it was going to take a long time to get them. That That's not a surprise, and I'm not complaining about that. It's just that we're getting into the cooler weather now. So, you know, kind of like to have doors and windows in by then. Now, to be honest, I could care less. If they, if they didn't do it until next spring, I'd be just happy about that for a couple of reasons. One, it delays all the stuff I have to take down in this room to make space for them to get at the two windows they have to do down here. And yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. And the other thing is, it just gives us a little bit more time to sock away a little bit more money to pay for all of this. Um, so yeah, but anyways, they said they would be contacting us uh, this coming weekend or something to possibly set up an installation date. They better not be suggesting October the 22nd because that's not going to happen then. That's the retreat. Um, just what I would need is banging, crashing, open spaces to nature while I'm trying to do a retreat. Yeah. But uh, anyways, we'll see what we see. Okay. So do I have anything else to tell you? Oh, yeah. I was going to I just mention the Sew and Craft. Sew Craft with me uh i did my first one now for those of you that may have never heard of this something new i'm trying in the show notes you'll find a link for so slash craft with me and essentially it is a link that never expires it's once you have it it always is there i'm not going to change it uh, because what it is is if i'm home here and i'm spending a day sewing or whatever um I like company. So if you're like me and you like company, then you've and you've got some time on your hands on one day, just click on the link. And if I'm here and available and working, I will let you into the room within a minute. If you don't get into the room within a minute, you know I am not active on the on the site. I can't give you any idea when these are going to happen. Um, kind of like a pop-up so day when I have those, except usually with that, I give you at least 24 hours notice this. No, you just have to test it. So basically you're sitting at home, you're working on something, you're alone. You're thinking it'd be nice to have some company and I'm bored with YouTube and listening to podcasts. Then you go over to your computer and you click on the link. And if I'm here, you're in. We chat, we work, we have a nice time. That's essentially what it's about. So I did that last week. Um, and it worked out pretty nice. Uh, last Wednesday, I was sitting here. I sort of made, said to myself, okay, this is going to be a so day. I have a lot to do. Let's get on with it. And I'd like some company. And so I had a few people. I think there was about a half a dozen at one point. And uh, it was nice. It was really nice. You know, it's like having friends over for, you know, the afternoon or for coffee or something like that so yeah so that's there and it's available all right so i think that brings me to the end of today's um vlog so yeah bye have a good week <laughs> we'll see you later bye bye for now